don't actually hold territories, they don't mark and defend them like we see with lions and leopards and, and a variety of other animals. Uh, they sort of they're, they're home ranges. So typically what a home range is, is it's sort of an area that they occupied, but it, it can change. It depends, of course, where the food is, where the water is. So they constantly will, will move around. Um, and, and even with the, the cows, the, the females, they hang together, but they don't necessarily stay together for their whole lives. They'll, you know, come and go, join different herds. It's a very sort of loose social structure. And the big bulls, like this fella over here, because he's a, he's a mature man, um, he will actually uh, move from herd of females to females, testing all of the cows to see if any of them are in estrus. And obviously you have two big bulls of equal size. Sometimes it's not always an equal battle. Uh, they'll come together and end up sort of bumping heads quite literally uh, in order uh, to claim the stake and be able to mate with the females that are in estrus in that particular herd. But he's not worried about that at the moment. He's taken some time to himself and it's quite common to see giraffe bulls on their own like this. I mean sometimes you'll even see a female with a youngster off on their own in the thicket. But I suppose he's theoretically he's not alone. He's got ox peckers in his ears. That <laughs> long tongue. Really stretching out, using that tongue and bringing in some leaves. Also just very carefully looking around. Now, Olivia, a question from you this afternoon. You're wondering if the lions take down giraffe and the sabi sand. Uh, not necessarily. I know the Charleston males, uh, which are two beautiful uh, males. One is quite famous because he's got one of his canines dangling from uh, his lower jaw and that injury is actually suspected from a, a giraffe that they, they took down. There's many different stories uh, but that's the one that I've heard time and time again. It actually happened while I was down there uh, guiding in the south too. So they do occasionally. Uh, I have heard of uh, some prides around Sangeeta, some, some of the really large super prides of lions. You can imagine when you've got more than 20 lions in a pride one buffalo is not going to go very far. So you have to take the next step and start going for things like giraffe. But it takes a lot of practice. It's not a particularly easy animal to hunt. And I feel like they need a lot of sort of training. And there's obviously certain techniques that need to be used. And if it's your first time hunting a giraffe, we see the Nkuhumas showing interest in these tall creatures all the time, but we have yet to see them take one down. They often chase them around but very dangerous for lions. But if you go up to Namibia, there are lions are specialists there again, Zimbabwe, they specialize in hunting not only giraffe, but also young elephant bulls, and I'm sure that similar things happen all over, uh, all over Africa, in fact, but not in this particular area, but it's not impossible either. Uh, they'll definitely take the chance if they can. Remember, with lions, they want to catch something. They want to catch the biggest animal that they physically can so they don't have to hunt straight away. If it means they can feed off it for a week, they'll be so excited about that. But I think this giraffe has probably had a you know, few encounters with lions in his life. Remember, they, don't, they won't use that long neck, of course, to to try and chase the lions away. That's what they're using when they're fighting. They swing their, their heads at each other. And if you go all the way down to the bottom where they use those powerful legs and they'll chop with their front feet. It's actually, it's quite intimidating when you see an angry giraffe having a go at lions. And then of course they have powerful hindquarters and they can kick back. And that could quite easily kill a lion if it connected in the wrong spot. But this is a beautiful feather. He, feather. he often hangs around the Voyatella Dam. Now, Laurie, you're wondering if the giraffe, or some giraffe, sorry, have that light color at the top of their heads for a specific reason or if it's sort of uh, just a genetic variation. I reckon it's specific, I mean you actually see it with most of the giraffe, typically around the ears and the, and the top of the head it's quite light. I'm not sure why, if it has a specific reason. Um, it's, it's quite interesting in fact. You don't normally see it too much with the, with the females. The females are typically lighter in color but we have seen on a number of different occasions an occasional uh, dark cow that will uh, sort of make you second guess yourself when it comes to trying to sex it from a distance. Uh, but I don't think there's any particular reason for it. I don't think I've ever really read about there being a significance for the lighter part around their heads. Maybe it's helping with camouflage because you can see in between their legs as well. It's quite light.
perhaps that helps break up the figure. We know that different colors and different patterns definitely do help in disruptive markings when it comes to camouflaging themselves and even a giraffe to an extent uh, needs to be camouflaged. There we go, you can see those lighter, those lighter patches. So I'm not sure if it's just a coincidence. But this is a particularly sort of pretty boy when it ter in terms of his color. Shame this fella hasn't got the straightest little Aussie cones, has he? They're sort of pointing in all sorts of directions. But he's just enjoying some leaves at the moment. The ox is also still around on him. But one has just flown off, so I wonder if the other two are going to follow and head elsewhere. I wonder what determines uh, the length of stay of oxpeckers on particular animals' backs. I've always wondered that. And sometimes, you know, you'll see them sitting on an animal for the whole day. Other times they're jumping from mammal to mammal within a herd. Sometimes they land on the back of one. I suppose if they get a swat and they connect, the tail connects the bird, they're not going to hang around there for too long. They'll probably move off. But I love watching that. It sort of reminds me of, I don't know why, uh, you know, old-fashioned typewriter. And as you type in, I don't, now you see, I don't even know what the correct words are. But, uh, you're, you know, the thing with the ink. Maybe, Seb, you can help me how it sort of shuffles to the side. I apologize. I'm just showing my angel. Yeah. Seb also know he also doesn't know what it's called. But when they do that with their bills, that's all I just hear that. I don't know why I hear that. And watch it in my head. They're one of the coolest birds out here. Now, Zedric, you're wondering if giraffe are relatively intelligent. Well, I think all animals out here have to have some form of intelligence to be able to survive and, and you know, in this harsh world out here because it's not the easiest living conditions. It's quite stressful constantly watching over your shoulder, especially if you're a prey species. And then again, if you're a predator, looking out for other predators, whether they're the same species or others, you know, a lot of these animals do show problem-solving ability. So I reckon, I reckon they're fairly intelligent I don't think they have the intelligence level however of an elephant um, but maybe maybe you know I think that they're all right but their communication is very different of course uh, they use body language to communicate most of the time from long distances and then of course we recently discovered that they hum which is interesting